Hello there everyone, a very good evening. This is me, Warren Shanmugam, and you are watching The Warren Shanmugam Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen, December 1st, 2021. Yes, we have got the finale, yeah? the last uh, track, the last end, the last month of 2021. We are all ready to receive 2022. My question to you is this. Are you guys ready? This is the question that I'm asking you. If you are ready, please type ready in the chat box. Yeah. If you are ready to receive 2022, whatever it may be, whatever comes, type R-E-A-D-Y, ready. Okay. So today, right, we have got some very interesting bunch of people. And I say interesting because uh, uh, you all know this is a special edition for a reason. Yeah. We have got someone all the way, and I say all the way from Turkey. Yes, her name is Nasreen, Nasreen Wari Yawa. I hope I pronounce your name properly, yeah, Nasreen. Yeah? Uh, she's an author, she's a coach, she's an editor, published author, and also a ghostwriter. Hmm, ghostwriter. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, you will know that shortly. Then we have got yet another man. Uh, man always... Uh, someone who I like to bring in. Why? Because you must have someone who can talk about the beauty of ladies. So therefore, we have got Nelson Bay. Nelson Bay is the Deputy President of Malaysian Entrepreneurs uh, Development uh, Association here in Malaysia, uh, or PUMM for short. He is also into logistics uh, and also a trainer on logistics. He will come and share with us a lot of things loaded with many other skills. What are those skills? You will know shortly. Then we have got Arlene. Arlene Tan is uh, the Secretary General of also PUMM and uh, she is an advocate and solicitor, High Court of Malaya. Now, she again have got something else that she will be sharing. So we have got three lovely people uh, without we wasting any more time. We will bring all three of them together. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the three of them. Hi there, everyone. Hello. Hi, good evening. Hello, good evening. Not okay now. Can you hear me? Limvitim is saying yes. Uh, Rajwin is saying already. Let me see. Yeah, if you can hear me, say yes. Okay, all right, lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, good. Now let's do this. Nasrin. Now, I saw this email that I received from you, yeah? And there was this list of things that you sent. Those are all the books. Uh, just to let you all know, yeah, Nelson and Arlene, now that you all are here, Nasreen uh, writes books. She does not write one book. She writes books. So I saw the list, right, uh, Nasreen? Too many books. How did you even do this, Nasreen? I need to ask it. That was the first question I wanted to ask you. Please let us know. How do you even write? Whether it's a co-author, ghostwriting, or also your own uh, book. Uh, how do you do it? Uh, how do you do this, Nasreen? I don't sleep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't sleep. I don't eat. I don't do anything else except books. I thought that much. No, that's, <laughs> that list that you see is actually... Um, uh, through the grace of God, really, I consider myself blessed to have worked with so many books. They're not all mine. I've worked with other authors, either in the capacity of an editor um, or a ghostwriter. Of course, I can't disclose who I've ghostwritten for. Or I've worked with them as their book coaches um, and have helped them to publish their books. 
So this is something I started while I was still teaching uh, in and around uh, 2014 or so. And um, I consistently worked my way from 2014 through to this year, working with a number of authors per year, helping them uh, to realize their dreams of uh, having their books written and then published. Mm -hmm. um, my own books, um, they are plus minus five that I've published. Okay, um, that's that's not such a big deal. <laughs> I appreciate the, the the you know the 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 awe with which you say I've written all these books, but really and truly speaking, they're not all written by me. They're edited, uh, ghostwritten, book coached by me, and that is how that uh, list of books has actually appeared. It's been a wonderful experience thus far. I'm sure. I'm sure. So uh, you have uh, spoken a little bit about uh, how you do it. Uh, and also, thank God you don't, uh, uh, you, you sleep, yeah? Uh, it's not that you don't sleep. But but the thing is this, uh, Nasreen, uh, a, a lot of times people say that when, whenever you are doing something, it's all about passion. So, mm -hmm. so the question that I want to ask you is this, is it out of passion that you're doing this? And passion here means what, Nasreen, to you? Um, uh, is it something that you create? Oh, what? Passion is something that you enjoy. Um, something that you can't live without. Something which if you try to live without, you would be extremely frustrated and miserable. Mm. Now, I tried uh, doing what everybody else does. Simply living or doing the job for the sake of survival. Did I enjoy myself? Did I truly, truly um, do whatever I did to the best of my ability and enjoy it with every bone in my body? Maybe, but not as much as if I am separated from books, whether I'm reading them or writing them. Books have always been the center of my world. It's the way I was raised. My parents raised us to read. So um, passion to me is something that you enjoy, something that you can't live without. In fact, without it, perhaps you feel like you can't even breathe. But no, passion then, acting on your passion means that you have to get up and do something about it. Mm -hmm. You have to make that a reality if it's still not your reality. So to me, passion is about uh, the feeling Okay, the feeling that it gives you and it being strong enough to drive you to bring it into your world. Mm. That to me is what it is. Okay, it's interesting how you spoke about it must drive you into this world. Now, this world that you're talking about, right? I remember having a conversation with you a couple of days back and you said that uh, you dream of these books. Now, that's really <laughs> amazing when you say that. Uh, and, 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 and you get alarmed when you don't dream of a particular book that you're reading. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going through there? Um, I don't know. It's a pattern I see. I always say that um, I don't find the authors. I don't find the books. The topics find me. Mm. What that means is that, I don't know, somewhere along the way, um, the, 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 the subject matter will actually be aligned to something that I've experienced at some point in my life or um, it's something that I'm passionate about, something that I feel strongly about. I may even have thought up this book idea for myself at some point and never got to write the book. But the author who has the same idea who wants to share the same message will find me somehow. And then I'm ignited. And then the ideas start flowing. And then I start dreaming up ideas. I start dreaming up things like the, the title of the book. The last book I helped a uh, book coach uh, is a book called Pearls of Noor. Mm -hmm. And Pearls of Noor, the author's name is Noor. And um, she was writing a book about spirituality, about how to get closer to God. This is not a subject I normally like to work with because it's such a, 
Um, I always say on, on a, you know, at an eating table or a discussion table, there are two things you should not talk about, politics and religion. <laughs> <laughs> she came to me with this book and I took it on, you know, mm. although I don't usually. And um, subject matter was beautiful and she had some beautiful ideas. But the title of the book came to me at 3 a.m. just before I wake up for the morning prayer. Mm. And this is what happens to me consistently. When I'm looking for ideas, they don't come when I'm awake. They come when I'm asleep. Wow. Just as I woke up, she, mes she messaged me from Australia to ask, can you help me choose a book title? And I simply said, Pearls of Glory. And she said, wow, how did you do that? <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> how do I say that I shouldn't about it? Yeah. Nice. It happens. Um, it's an it's an intuitive thing. Yeah, it's an intuitive thing. Um, and when I'm in in when I'm in line with the subject, when I am passionate about a subject, um, maybe I'm not sleepy. Maybe I'm awake in my sleep, mm. and maybe those ideas are coming. Maybe I really don't sleep. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now, now, uh, as you are giving the answers, right, I'm getting loads of messages. In my WhatsApp and also in the in the chat area, yeah. But uh, everybody is saying, "Hey, uh, what a wonderful topic!" Uh, hey, how am I supposed to write my own book? Uh, Nasreen, can you help me? And uh, all those messages are coming, just uh, uh, overloaded. But I have got some questions here, very uh, nice comments and questions also. Uh, Rajuin Kaur says, uh, uh, "Well done, Warren, Nasreen, Nelson, and also Arlene." Uh, uh, Sangari says, uh, "Hello there." Lim Vitim says, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, and uh, Florence Yu is saying hello. Kenny Ng said something nicely. He said, passion is going to bed without, without regards about what you did that day. Ah, that's interesting, yeah? Uh, a different perspective altogether. Now, you spoke about how you coach people and uh, you, you came along this word called, you don't create, but innate. You know, very nicely said. But the question is this. How do you then, when you coach someone, you need to make sure that one, they have got the passion or the desire. If they don't have the desire or passion, but they still want to have a book uh, written, how do you then create that passion to that particular person? Or can you even create? How do you Absolutely. tackle that? Yeah. Um. You know, any, anybody that comes to you with a book idea may not be passionate about it uh, as yet because they are in a state of unbelief. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that it is something that they can achieve. So when they come to you, you have to tap into what they see. And what I mean by what they see is everybody who has a book idea has a vision they either see their book cover and are excited by it. Maybe they see themselves at their book signing event and are excited by it. Maybe they've had a tragedy and they are, they are willing to talk about it. Maybe they've had just a wonderful idea and they want to share it with the world. But because they're still in that state of unbelief, you've got to take that unbelief and transform it into something that is believable and achievable, most importantly. Because when an author comes to you, they come to you with a number of thoughts that are going on in their head, okay? Much like a, uh, much like a brainstorming uh, session on a flip chart. There's all these ideas that are going on. There are, sometimes there are particular phrases in their head that come out but they don't know what to do with that. And they don't know whether that's workable or not. So what a book coach does is they listen intuitively. They ask the correct questions about why do you want to write this book? What's your vision for this book? What do you want to achieve after you've written the book? What do you see? And you would invariably get what I'm talking about. I get authors tell me, I see the cover of my book. My, my book is white. It's got a number of colors on it. Much like this cover that you see behind me, that one came in a dream too. 
you know, <laughs> it's my vision for the book. Um, so I get this, this kind of response and based on the response that I get, it's now my job to turn that state of unbelievability into something that is achievable so that it becomes believable. And once it becomes believable, it becomes a passion. Mm, wow. Because then when the plan is on paper, the author believes that they are capable of doing it. Let's face it, Warren. Adults want to do things in quantifiable measures. Yes, ma'am. So when you break a hole into 10 things that need to be achieved, in, in the case of a book, 10 different chapters mm. with 10 different ideas per chapter, and you give them two weeks, three weeks, a month to write a chapter, it becomes something that's doable because you teach them how. And once they get started on that kind of journey and they can see the end in mind, then believable becomes passion and passion drives to the end. Nice, nice. Something that I, I, I learned from this, this uh, couple of things that you said uh, is sometimes uh, belief drives passion, sometimes passion drives belief. It's uh, how you put it and where do you want to use it. Now, uh, when you speak about this, right, uh, something just came into my mind, Nasreen. Uh, how do you, now, uh, you spoke about the 10 chapters uh, breaking into small, small chunks, yeah? And then eventually you you explore every single nuggets of it. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm using those words loosely, yeah? Uh, and, and this is the thing. How do you write a book... Uh, 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 and the question is this, do I use my perspective or do I use a third person's perspective? You know, sometimes a uh, couple of books that we read, is like, I am doing this. I went through, it's all about me, myself, I, my family. And then uh, another book that you read is about, he went through this. So the character became becomes yet another person, a different person, a different entity, rather than you yourself writing it about yourself. This is similar to uh, like how when you watch movies or the after movies, right? When you interview the cast, they say that the character took on this, but it's actually them taking on the character. But never mm -hmm. once I have heard them saying that, you know what? It is me. I did this because no, it is like uh, Elsa did this because or Spider-Man did that because. So it's like you are separating yourself. And, and that's interesting. It's like the fly mm -hmm. on the wall, you know? like how uh, a, a different perspective altogether. You, you want to share a little bit of, about as to how do you write? Do you need to have a perspective uh, set in your mind or it just comes? I think in the case of storytelling, you've got to decide at the outset who's telling the story. Hmm. When you're working with nonfiction books, generally it's going to be the first person. Hmm. Autobiography, memoir, especially if the person is alive. Um, but when it comes to fiction, you know, storytelling, and if you choose to tell your story first person, mm. um, you are generally looking at the type of book in which the author likes to write short sentences that gives spurts of information. Mm. Mm. I sleep. I see something. I feel something. It's a build-up of things before the author gives you uh, the actual scene or scenario. Um, that type of writing is extremely powerful. And it's usually written in the present tense. Mm. And you are reading the story as if it is happening now. Okay? It happened. It's over. But the author is taking you through the story as if it is happening now. That's a very powerful way to write because you are tapping into the feelings and the emotions of the reader before you present the actual um, scene, the actual happening, the actual event. Mm. So the reader is feeling before they are seen. And then when you flip that coin, and this is the general consensus that everybody should write in the past tense. And that is when you are telling the story through third person. 
So J.K. J.K. Rowling may be writing the story, okay, but he's, he may be telling it through the eyes of a child mm. or the eyes of a woman, yeah, or the eyes of a murderer. Take your pick. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So um, the the choice is the authors. Um, generally, authors know that they want to write a book, but they don't know what their writing style is yet. Mm -hmm. Now, as a book coach, you have to be all fair with the types of writing styles there are. And let's say, for example, um, you've been through a, a tragedy. You were shot in the mouth. And you want your reader to feel those moments building up to that scene, then I, as the book coach, would say to you, well, then this is how we're going to do it. Oh. Present tense, this, this, this way, this way, this way. Oh. So uh, the book coach has to know the different writing styles and then be able to bring that out in the author. Mm. A lot of work, a lot of trying before achieving, but it's fun and it's doable. Yeah, definitely fun and doable if you're able to do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. You you say it like as though uh, you're gonna go shopping and then that's about it. So as you are talking, right, that's it. For me, it's like my God, that's a lot of work. So so where do a person who wants to write a book finds time? <clears throat> How badly do you want to write this book is my question. Mm. Going back How badly do you want to publish this book? Mm. You see, um, we, could, we can all use excuses and we all have them. They're there and ready, mm. right? We all have full-time jobs. Yep. I have one too. Um, we all have uh, kids, okay? We all have um, extended family that we have responsibilities for. Mm -hmm. But when we want to achieve something that is um, there, that we badly want, the question is how badly do we want it? And if you want it badly enough, then you will wake up an hour earlier before mm -hmm. the rest of the household wakes up and you will write. Or you will sleep an hour later and you will write. Or you will use your lunch break at work to write. Or you will take yourself uh, on your day off to a coffee shop or a restaurant and write. So there are 24 hours in the day and nobody gets an, a minute more and a minute less. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets the same. You've got to ask yourself, what am I doing with my 24 hours and how badly do I want this to take off? Mm -hmm. When I was in that position, when I was working a full-time teaching position, and I had just started to edit and work with authors, I used a number of holidays without going home to South Africa. I used a number of holidays to finish up the books that I wanted to write for myself and then to work on other authors' projects so that I could help them publish. Mm. That was the time I found. So you're going to decide, you see, because my big, bigger goal was to be able to leave the teaching profession eventually and uh, transition into publishing. It was a dream. It was it was a, it was something I really wanted to explore. I had to sit down and ask myself, how badly do you want this? Yeah. Beautiful question. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this, you heard Nazrin right. Uh, how badly do you want this? How much do you really want to write a book? How much do you really want to have a book published? with your name as, an, as the author and the title that has been uh, clouding your mind for the longest time ever appearing on that cover. Uh, think about it. If you have got the desire, the vision, the liking, the belief, please uh, talk to Nazreen. Nazreen is here all the way from Turkey talking to us about how do you write a book. Now, uh, Nazreen, Maureen said nicely, she said, keyword here is your determination Changing the unbelievable. Very nicely said, yeah, Maureen. Yeah. And on that Absolutely. and on that same note, right? I have got this list of things that you spoke about. Uh, I will give you some names of countries or continent. Uh, 
you tell me the story okay uh, and this is related to you of course nasreen yeah india hot seat. <laughs> i mean the hot seat yes hot seat yes india south africa turkey america kuwait oh boy <laughs> <laughs> i am an indian born and raised in south africa worked there uh, in corporate for a number of years before i decided to exchange stilettos and suits <laughs> for lab coats and trainers came to turkey to teach uh, english for a number of years before i became a an author then by the will of god married an american who happens to have been born in Kuwait <laughs> have i connected the dot yes ma'am indeed you have that is so interesting yeah so so the question that i want to ask after the that question is this do you love what you do do i did, did i get that right do i love what i do love hello do, do? do you love what oh, you I'm, do I'm, I'm okay <laughs> do i love it absolutely i think um i think one of the things i will always be grateful for especially to my husband is giving me this opportunity um to transition from training into full time uh, publishing um so that i could explore this passion to its fullest and be able to do what i do um learning has always been something that i I loved as well and believe me um working with all these authors is a revelation and an education and it is it is growth like you cannot believe lovely 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 now uh, i have to ask you these questions because left and right i am seeing all the comments and they want to know, they want to have tips as to how do you write a book uh, uh can you share with us uh what are the one or two steps that you need to really do uh in uh, getting your book published uh it's pretty simple uh think about your um think about what you want to write but more importantly think about why you want to write it and who you're writing it for write that down okay um put your vision down on paper that's important because that's going to get you excited about your project mm-hmm. now put every idea that is going through your head onto paper in other words brainstorm now look at that bigger picture and decide what are my main ideas those become your chapters now decide how to populate those chapters mm-hmm. and what content is going to go into those chapters based on what your objectives are and write your book lovely lovely thank you so much thank you so much nasreen nasreen hang in there yeah hang in there ladies and gentlemen that was nasreen uh, you saw the whole uh, storyline yeah as to what nasreen was doing and and It's interesting how they have got so many things uh, coming by. Now, I have got a few more people here waiting to be uh, uh, in and they want to share a couple of things of their own. But before that, let me just share with you uh, this, yeah? Okay, let me see. See, let me see how do I do this yeah okay there you go we have got uh, Nelson and Arlene together with us hi there Nelson hi there Arlene hi good evening everyone uh, uh, we have got Nelson Arlene together with uh, Nasreen uh, from Turkey uh, l- ladies and gentlemen introduce yourselves uh and 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 i want to uh, have this transition yeah this this period before uh, i ask uh, start asking questions to nelson and arlene uh, i would give uh, uh, some space for nasreen to rest but before that if nelson and arlene if you have got any questions 
uh, that you want to ask Ali and uh, Nasreen, please go so, uh, do so. Nasreen, if you have got any questions for Arlene and also Dalsen, please do so. This is the time. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> I feel like it was really cool. Um, Nasreen, it was really inspiring uh, listening to you just now. Okay, so uh, being a woman entrepreneur in Malaysia, I've, I've got some questions, okay, which uh, was really, I think, I think, fun to know, okay, because you are um, an American living in uh, Turkey. So uh, can you tell us about uh, the woman's lifestyle in Turkey? How, how is it different from um, the country which you were being born? Um, it's a general lifestyle change. Uh, when I lived in South Africa post-apartheid, um, pre-apartheid, the, the life was different. And then post-apartheid, life changed a lot in South Africa. Um, security issues, you know, became an issue. My own mom was shot by an off-duty policeman during that period. And uh, a lot of people experienced um, the areas of fear, the areas of um, 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 you know, um, being locked away and uh, taken further away from being more sociable because it just wasn't safe anymore. Um, so I speak very generally when I say that when I when when I came to Turkey, uh, I had to unlearn a lot of the behaviors that I learned post apartheid South Africa. For example, lock your doors, um, look over your shoulder all the time to see who's around you carry your handbag the other way around so that the latch on your handbag uh, isn't uh, accessible, easily accessible. Um, lock your car door as soon as you get in. You know, um, try not to lose anything because you're definitely not going to get it back. And I don't mean any disrespect to South Africa or its people because I love South Africa, but unfortunately that became the climate. Um, things like rape, things like uh, harassment in the workplace became a reality that we weren't used to hearing about before. And when I came to Turkey, I'll tell you a funny story. I went to look at an apartment on the ground floor and the state agent was really excited because it's perfect for a single teacher. And I said, but I can't live here. And she said, why? I said, because the, burglar, because the, the, the windows have no burglar cards on them. I said, what? I would go to a restaurant and I would put my bag down and everybody else would put it, you know, on the chair, just hanging. And I would sit with it on my lap like this closely. So a completely different way of life. And when I go to South Africa now, I have to relearn behavior that I have unlearned. And when I come back to Turkey, I have to unlearn behavior that I relearned. That's so, interesting. <laughs> Two completely different ways of life uh, for women and generally, um, you know, for, for everybody. But it's fun all the same. Good. Nasrin, any questions that you want to ask Arlene or Nelson? Jain, 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 jain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the... <laughs> so, Nelson, I, have a, I, I saw an interesting sign a while ago. On the, at a business place and, I, and I'm just I've always been intrigued by it and I'd like to know your thought about it the sign said do you want to talk to the man in charge or the woman who knows what's happening what do you think about that is that the case in Malaysia today in, in industry in general uh, I think uh in my opinion, and then it's not really because you know, like the person in charge can be uh, can be male and the female, mm -hmm. and then uh, but generally, you know, in uh, we have a lot of opportunity for women entrepreneurs and the women workers, you know, in the working place. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, regardless, you know, we are from uh, any race or or any uh, on any social class, and then but you know, in the in the workplace, and then we have you know like. Uh, different, different, or respective of the duty and also the mm -hmm. career. So when we talk to them, and then we make sure we make sure it's the, the right person. But the way we talk to men and women are very different because you know, like mm -hmm. you know, things like men and can be like very straightforward. You know, in business world, okay, this uh, A B C means A B C, 
uh, one, two, three means that one, two, three. You do it step by step, means that one uh, step by step. When we talk to the female or the woman, it will be different story. So we have to like, you know, think the way that, you know, when we talk to them, and then we have to listen very carefully. Because sometimes yes is no. No is yes or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and some more. And then, because, you know, some, some women, that their thought is like a bit sensitive. You know, you know for men, we just express, you know, uh, oh, this is this is the way we do it. You know, when the response come in, and then we talk, you know, oh, this way, that way, that way, and many, many things come back. And come up, you know, in different, different outcome or something like that. Instead, I, I sound like, you know, this is a bit, uh, 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 for both of us, and then to learn together, because, you know, uh, for human being, and then we should respect, you know, men and, uh, the male and female, female and so the male. So this is, you know, some differences. Yeah, so but do you think those differences are to be celebrated or are they problematic? Uh, can be like uh, both. It depends on the uh, on the situation. Yeah, because you know, like uh, some of uh, some of the decision, and then we have to do it, and then we have no choice, and then we have to go for diplomatic. Yeah, something mm. like that. So let's say I come to you. Yeah. And you're the human resources manager, and there's something I want to discuss with you. Now, I'm a woman, and by nature, I'm an extremely emotional being. That's the way God made me. Now, I break down into tears. Yeah. How are you going to handle me? Yeah. Uh, for me, and I, I will listen. I will uh, open my gut to listen what happened. You know, I should ask, you know, uh, what happened to you? Uh, any, anything I can help you? I Then I stop that. Say, I don't talk so much and then let her talk, express, you know, all this thing. Uh, from there, then I can analyze what happened, what makes, uh, what makes her, uh, uh, what makes her like feel sad or maybe, you know, she has the emotion. After, after she expressed anything out, everything okay, then back to the normal and then our communication phase can be like the same or equally. Then I can talk to her, then she can listen to me or I can listen to her. Just let her, you know, like express, maybe she can feel emotion or angry or whatever. Just talk, 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 talk. I just listen, 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 listen. Analyze, <laughs> analyze like that. So after finish, okay, are you okay? Okay, uh, okay, let me talk. And then I start to talking to her. Uh, then we can have a same communication way and then we can connect together to achieve, you know, like uh, the, communicate, the communication together. So, Wonderful, gender-based communication. Excellent. Yeah, listening, listening is very important. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, if you had to yes. write a memoir about yourself, what would the title be? <laughs> no. <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying the title would be no. <laughs> no? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, hmm. Yeah, um, I, I was into baking uh, recently, so, so I was thinking that... um. Baking could be could be one of the topics which are uh, I'm, I'm going to buy the mount because uh -huh. so a what are you trying to yeah. your book be? Hmm. A born to big lawyer? Oh, that's funny. Why? <laughs> wow. Um, um. Yeah. Some some people say that I have got this talent in baking. Wonderful. Wonderful, excellent. Any more questions? Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was actually thankful to have that skill, and I only discovered it recently. Nice. It's just being for fun <laughs> and sharing. So, I've got okay, questions for you uh, in respect of uh, entrepreneurship. Are the women in uh, Turkey they are into this uh, entrepreneurship? I didn't get that, Ali. What, what were you asking? Yeah. Um, are the women in uh, Turkey into entrepreneurship? Oh, absolutely. I think um, women in Turkey are, um, um, are growing leaps and bounds when it comes to entrepreneurship, um, especially in home industry. Um, women are fast taking their uh, talents, their skills, and they are turning it into profitable industry, particularly the hijab industry. You will find a lot of online shops uh, that are run by women who are operating either from their uh, homes or from their garages. Um, you will find a lot of women operating in industry as well. Teaching is one of the biggest professions for, for women here. They are encouraged to teach because 
um, there's a solid belief that um, uh, women have the instinct for it, and they uh, um, they 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 have the ability to sustain a society um, in terms of its uh, moral values and things um, far better than men. Okay, that's not to say that you won't find male teachers, but the ratio of the uh, you know women to men are uh, quite high in terms of teaching. But in all spheres of industry, I don't see, um, I, I don't see any, any uh, problems with women working in Turkey. It's a done thing. It's a done thing. Whether you put the hijab or without, uh, women in Turkey are making their mark, even in sports. And it's a wonderful thing to see. Nice, nice. Nasreen, I have got this question. Uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lau Bin Tik, uh, he's a prominent dermatologist, uh, also a philanthropist. Yeah? Uh, he's with us in the chat group and he's asking you this question. Do you give advices always? Uh, uh, I mean, how, what is he trying to ask is uh, when you have got women, right? Do you give advices to women as to how to become better? Uh, do you have uh, an answer for that? I try not to advise anybody because... Uh, what, what I will do is if you want to talk to me, I will ask the right questions. Um, I will ask you questions that help you um, to come to some form of realization and solution yourself. You see, because ultimately I believe, uh, especially when it comes to women, they know the answer already. They know what they would like already. But women tend to... Uh, want somebody else's affirmation of what they're thinking, feeling, and most importantly, uh, affirmation of what decision they've come to. So you want to take a woman or anybody for that matter through the correct questions so that they make, they are, they come to a point of being brave enough to voice what they're already thinking. Mm -hmm. And then Yes, um, I might affirm and reaffirm again that what they are thinking and the solution that they have thought up is actually the correct one, or maybe to explore another avenue. I might make a suggestion, but I will not advise. Okay, perfect. Arlene, go ahead, Arlene. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's really this is the questions for you. Uh, you do ghostwriting. Normally, you put words into the ideas of someone else. Okay, because of uh, the ghost writing. So my question is, uh, what actually drives you to convey a message and vision by another person? Okay, especially when you uh, need to be in sync with uh, the author that you both write for. One of the most important exercises that I go through with an author in the case of ghost writing is I get to know the author. Um, I need to know and I need to be connected to the author. Um, there needs to be a connection, is what I'm saying. If I don't feel that connection, I'm going to be very honest and say, I never take on that project. Okay, because I'm not going to uh, do justice to that book. I take on a project when I can connect with an author and an author can connect with me. If we hit it off uh, on the first meeting itself, we, there's an understanding. I can see the author's vision, and the author knows that I can deliver on that vision. Then I know that I'm on the correct track. When I get to know an author, then I learn the way the author speaks. I learn her tone. I learn her gestures. Um, there was one particular author that I was writing for that I found extremely difficult to write for. Hers was a poetic memoir. And I mean the entire memoir from start to finish, poetry. Wow. Um, and she was an extremely, um, how shall I put it, um, an extremely petite, soft-spoken woman. And sometimes that can be me. But most times, I'm loud and gregarious, you know, and that comes out even in my personal writing. You will, you will, you will catch my personality in my writing. How do I do this? 
we feed it off, but how do I get into her voice? Uh, well, I went to the stores, I bought a couple of uh, the types of shirts that I usually see her wear. And I started to call her regularly so that I could just listen to her and glean her personality and take it on, imbibe it. And whilst I was uh, working on her book, mm -hmm. as book coach, as editor, I would wear her shirts and I would imagine that I was her. If, she, if I were her, how would I do this? And very often, I would get the response from her and it would be, uh, that is exactly what I would have said. There you go. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, even this book I've written, Exceptional Authors Are Authentic, it touches on that subject of going outside the box um, to write and to edit and to proofread and to do all these things because that is what it requires of you. If you're just going to think that I need a plan and then I'm going to work according to the plan, um, sure, you'll get a book, but are you going to get a book that everybody wants to read? That is the important question. And are you able to sustain a long-term relationship with your author if you're just going to deliver on what you said. So my own coach, Father Sensei, has always taught me under promise and over deliver. Nice, nicely said. And I work with that principle. Uh, so that is how I do it, totally out of the box. Nice. And I think Nelson also have got a, a book that he have written. You want to share a little bit about your story, Nelson? Uh, yes, I want to share since the last spring this year. Actually, in year 2003, when I was uh, uh, 29 years old, I was thinking, you know, what are, uh, what are my, uh, what were my career uh, during after 30s, you know, and my lifetime. So the time, you know, like I, I, I start to get into my, my own business, entrepreneurs. And I think one of the skills that, you know, we want, we need to learn is the public speaking. Okay, where to learn the public speaking? So I I uh, I joined Toastmaster in year 2013 when I was uh, 29 years old. So I need to do self introduction, and also I need to present my first assignment. After that, you know, you know, during the time I was crazy for reading books, a lot of books, you know, that I I read. Then then I, after I read one book, it's about uh, autobiography from uh, Lim Gotong, the founder. Or the owner of Genting Highland. Okay. So what I feel like, you know, he, he, he was an old man at the time, and then I that this is like, you know, the book like that. So I after I read, you know, like how he start his child uh, childhood and then how he uh, fight about his career and then he was not uh, uh, well educated, he couldn't speak Malay and couldn't speak English, but he can look his business empire, not only in Malaysia but internationally. How he could do that, and then he, you know, the um that, that book inspired me. So after that, you know, before I present, and I need to, I need to write down, I need to prepare for myself. You know what to share about this one? Suddenly, you know, like I have an idea. Why not I write my own book for myself? You know, I also have my story, but my story is not, you know, uh, uh it's not big dream as him, but I also have a dream. You know, each of us, and then we have a dream. You know what to do all these things, and during. Year uh, 29 years old, I need to think, you know, what are the next lifestyle, you know, or maybe the life that I want to achieve and a lot of things like that. So after that, then I prepare, you know, like a, a book like this. After when I present, I share about my, my life in short, you know, uh, just a half of the book only. Then I told all the audience, I left all empty, you know, after the first half, uh, second half of the books. Why I want to live empty? Because you know, this is my life. That you know, I think that I want to put color in the book. I will put the color. I want to book the beautiful words or, or anything. Then I just slot in only. So that you know, the life that in uh, after my thirties, actually, you know, I can plan for myself. You know what I want the contents for myself, and then I talk, and then I go achieve it, and then I will put in the book. 
So next time my children or maybe Quaran or Nasreen, and then you can read about my story. So then I was so, you know, I was so inspired for myself and then I stand up and then I share all the things that during the, uh, after five minutes, I was the best speaker, you know, giving <laughs> a session. Then I, then from there, then I totally changed my, changed my life. You know, like uh, Warren, you know me, I think uh, just a few years back, you know, but during about, uh, about this uh, 10 over years, I uh, do a lot of things for myself. Mm-hmm. You know, then later, then you can see badminton, you can see I'm the, you know, I do drumming, I do dancing, I do, do whatever thing I like. You know, I do it and actually it's for my own book, mm. for my own story. Uh, why half? You know, because, you know, I still have, you know, maybe half of the life I need to go. <laughs> go through, right? Uh, so whatever whatever I want to do, I want to do colorful life or something like that. And I, will, I, I need to do it for myself. So then, you know, I, I feel uh, I feel blessed, you know, every day that, you know, like I can slot in, you know, the story for myself. Yeah, nice. So this is, yeah, this is my story. Lovely comments, Astrid. Yeah, Nasrin. This is commonly what we what we what we call journaling, and it's a wonderful way to actually collect material for your autobiography or your book later on. So, actually, what you've done, Nelson, is um, you've written yourself into success, and that is how you are uh, manifesting whatever it is that you are achieving, which is a wonderful way to do it. You're writing your vision and you're going out to achieve it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a beautiful way to live life. I am very sold on the idea of journaling. This is something I do myself. Um, and it's it's also something that we encourage authors to do um, as well. Because uh, in journaling, journaling isn't just journaling. It's not just about that story for the day. Um, it's also about stress busting. It's also about uh, resolving problems. Mm. And your journal can be your best friend. I say that your journal is better than your best friend because your journal never squeals. <laughs> it never says, stop, I don't want to hear anymore. Your journal will never ever tell anybody your secrets. unless somebody opens it. Yeah. You can bleed all over your journal and it will never squeal. Okay, so your journal can be your best friend, and I think Nelson, what you're doing is commendable, and that you should never stop. Very nice, very nice. So you see, guys, uh, uh, we have got uh, Arlene here, we have got Nelson here, and we have got Nasreen here, and she was talking about a lot of stories as, as to. How do you write a book? And then Nelson came in and said he started journaling. So, uh, and Ar- Arlene is already ready yeah, with her book title. Uh, is, is there already. Yeah? Now I just have to call. Arlene, you better start the book. Yeah, you have to start writing the book faster or, or else Nasreen will take the title. <laughs> but, but this is the thing. <laughs> but this is the thing. This is the thing. Uh, everybody, uh, and I like Nasreen, what you spoke uh, uh, when we... Uh, well, backstage, uh, that everyone have got their own bestseller story. Is that what you said? Everybody is born with a bestselling story with them. There you go. When you choose to share it with others, you are contributing to a certain part or form of society. Oh, that is so blissfully said, you know. Very rightfully said, you know. Never, never, never think that your story is like nothing. So a lot of times people used to say, you know, even when I call them uh, up uh, to be my guest, they will say, hey, I've got nothing to contribute. I've got nothing to say. No, every single one of you have got a story to, to say to share, and believe me, someone out there who's listening to you will be touched and transformation can happen. If you don't do that, then you are guilty as charged. So remember, start writing your bestseller. That is so important. Now, if you want to know more about writing a book, exceptionalauthor at gmail.com. Exceptionalauthor, one word, at gmail.com is where you have to post your questions and it will go straight to Nasreen's uh, inbox. And she will reply to you. And if you need coaching, you guys get connected and write that book of yours with the author name, your name. Okay, Nasreen, hang in there. I will speak to these two lovely people uh, uh, and I'll ask them some questions. Just be there so that you will understand more uh, about them. 
All right, good. Aline, Aline, I want to ask you this. You are in uh, the legal industry. How long have you been doing this, ma'am? Can you share a little bit about uh, your career? Right. Uh, I've been a qualified lawyer in Malaysia for about 11 years. So uh, before I uh, got into uh, practice, I've been in the uh, intellectual property line for two years. So all that, if you were to come at the working experience uh, in this uh, legal industry, it has been uh, approximately 13 years. Okay, good. And Nelson, yourself, sir, logistics, yeah. uh, you are the uh, general manager for this company of yours. Tell us a little bit about uh, your career, how you became who you are. Okay. Uh, when I started the time uh, in 1997, after I finished my college, so I know I, I know that I, I don't want to spend a lot more time for further study. So then I start to get into career. So one day I heard one of my friends that you know the shipping industry or the shipping industry is very good. Then you can you can make a lot of money and then you can have a lot of chance, you know, because it's international business, something like that. So I start to open the star our newspaper look for the vacancy then i got the job i was so happy <laughs> my salary only 1100 <laughs> and then i started from there to, to to be a salesman and then i developed myself and then i learned myself and then i i, I have my own business in malaysia so i i i am also one of the logistic trainer and then i also do training for logistics so this is how I started my Beautiful. Career. Very nice. Very nice. Now, uh, it, it's very simplified, yeah? But I'm sure you have got a lot more experiences uh, and exposure along that journey of yours, both Nelson and also Arlene. But I want to speak more a little uh, on this uh, association that uh, we are in. Uh, Malaysia Entrepreneurs Development Association. P-U-M-M for a short. Now, P-U-M-M is now uh, overwhelming. Yeah? Everybody knows P-U-M-M now. Yeah, We are in the Facebook, we are in Instagram, we are in LinkedIn. Everybody speaks about it. We have got events after events. Loads of stuff's happening. Nelson, tell us a little bit or rather a little bit more as to what is P-U-M-M. Okay. P-U-M-M in English stands for Malaysia Entrepreneurs Development Malaysia. The vision is to be the lead development platform for entrepreneurs in Malaysia and globally we, we can see like uh, what what are the uh, uh, what are the keywords for this is the development platform mm -hmm. development platform for who is for entrepreneurs each of the entrepreneurs or the business in any time you need development what are the development you need networking mm -hmm. right you need networks like you know I I have my friends I have my supplier I have my uh, business partner or whatever and then when you come in and then you can uh, meet, uh, you can meet up a lot of different, different industry leaders or maybe different uh, industry players, something like that. So this is a network. And then through the sharing, you know, like I share my industry, you share my, your industry, all this, we can learn each other. One day we can be, become a business partner or maybe we can do business together or maybe you inspire me, I inspire you. So this is a platform. And, and, and go through, you know, like along the way, then we can share or listen a lot of experience, some working experience, some industry experience, some uh, 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 business experience that then we can learn, uh, learn each other. Then we also can encourage each other to go better, to go faster, to, to be number one in your industry, or you can expand your business to anywhere or something like that. So through this enhancement, uh, in order to be the market leader or the leader of the entrepreneurs, we need skills, right? Because, you know, like, uh, this is the time that the era of digitalization, mm -hmm. okay? I'm sure, you know, each of us then we have to go online. Last time, maybe, you know, like, we, we don't have the technology, we cannot connect with us. We cannot see Ali, we cannot see just online, and we cannot, we cannot just, like, do streaming, and then uh, together with all, my uh, all our friends in the Facebook Live, and also, the, uh, uh, and also other things, something like that. So this is what uh, what we do it. So through this and uh, this platform and through this association, we can connect together. So this is the this is one of the things. The last thing I want to share about our association is about the mindset development. You see the people, you know, like you can see uh, uh, foreign, okay, he's so capable and also so talented. You know, like you know, besides the association and then every Wednesday you open the show, 
okay and then uh, you open the show that you want to inspire not only Malaysian but it's for the whole world you know and also the woman empowerment something like that okay? this is the, the mindset development for us like we are not only doing business and also like uh, we want to make money only we have to contribute our time for society you know to help you know those people that they need our help and then uh, and then also we have a, a great entrepreneurs that they can do business very quick until 100 million or 500 million who are they they are our members so uh, uh I, I encourage you know like whether you are member or not member and then just like uh, you can join our event and then you can learn a lot, a lot of things from our association so i joined this association since year 2009 until now i never regret Nice. Join this association, PYMN. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for that experience and thank you for the compliment, Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Nelson Bay. Yeah? He's the deputy president of PUMM. Interesting guy. Then uh, we have got Arlene. Arlene, I want to ask you this. Uh, uh, how long have you been in this, uh, uh, in this organization? But more so, right? You as a woman, now I know that uh, they accept women, yeah? But how many women are there? And then how are you guys doing amongst the men and i'm sure nasreen is all happy to hear uh, from you go ahead <laughs> all right uh, i joined you uh, back in 2018 uh, since then you has actually provided me with uh, ample opportunities especially uh, me being a, a woman entrepreneur um, my quick advice to the central committee uh, clearly shows that uh, as, soon, as long as you are uh, le- willing to learn and willing to contribute the chance uh, to grow is always there Okay, um, your questions towards the uh, number of um, women in uh, the organization, I don't have the solid figures. Okay, but uh, we can see that uh, probably um, it's just like eight to two, yeah, 80 percent men and twenty percent women. So for for women to join this um, PUMM, we definitely stand a uh, much better chance. Okay, even though we say gender equality, okay, but you do stand a, a better chance in terms of opportunities. <laughs> very nice, very nice, Alin. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, the uh, Secretary General, yeah, Alin Tan, and it's interesting how she said uh, 80-20. So, the more ladies who are listening there. Do not wait. Please join PUMM because you can do so much. You can learn so much. Now, on that same note, right, Arlene, uh, and and I want to ask you this. Uh, I've got loads of questions, but I want to ask you this. What's the benefit? What is the benefit uh, for you personally, right, throughout the years that you have been uh, in PUMM? What have you achieved? Um, Gaining knowledge will be the first one, okay, because I'm here uh, as a start to learn to be a successful entrepreneur okay because uh, all the while my husband was saying that um you are uh, not the right time to be an entrepreneur to be a boss okay this is an association for you to learn from the right person okay and change your mindset because mm. you have been treating people uh way too well yeah. i mean uh, <laughs> that was what he said yeah. yeah okay but but the thing is okay when, when i'm in uh this organization it actually really opened my eye so there are people who are treating uh, others, okay, much better than me, okay? And, and they are people who are more than willing to share their life journey and their secret of success, okay, with us. They have got no obligations to share this thing with us, mm. okay? That's nice. But why do they do that? Because they, they just want uh, us to grow, okay, without pain, without going through all those uh, failures that they have gone through all the years, okay? So to those who are watching now, check out our PUMM uh, Facebook page, okay? You'll be able to see all the wonderful recordings of our experience over the years, you know? You know, for uh, since last year, the MCO, PUMM is actually um, the uh, award winning. We have uh, been accorded with the uh, Guinness uh, Malaysia uh, Box of Records, okay? For the um yeah for the uh, association who has um, conducted the most online sharing mm. yeah why do we do that because we want to benefit okay not only our members but the Malaysian public as a whole. Mm. That's nice. Right. That's nice. Uh, very nicely said, uh, Nelson. She said that uh, she learned a lot, and I'm assuming that uh, and, and I also heard some of them say that. Uh, you have got a lot of big bosses there, entrepreneurs, yeah, business owners, uh, 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 highly positioned people, and whatnot. 
uh, and they are always willing to help each and every member uh, without seeing their level, their designation, uh, and whatnot. My question is this, how are y'all able to do that? Yeah, okay, uh, for my sharing, I think uh, as a leader, because I'm the national deputy president, I must lead by example, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So how I lead by example, if they say I come back to my career, I may be, you know, like one of the one of the successful uh, person in logistics or something like that, but it's not a big deal. When you come to PMM, you can see free shops. Wow, you know, this is so successful, you know, all this, you know, uh, they have a title like Pacto 3 or Pacto or something like that. All this, the leadership is the most, most challenging one, you see? So, you know, how you we can get all together, actually, is a sense of, like, family. You know, when you come in, everyone, you know, seems, like, very friendly. So, how you know, like, very friendly and welcoming, you know, this uh, attitude and also uh, and also this kind of a uh, way, you know, to get along with the members and then it comes from the leaders. You know, how our leader react, how we, we, we our, uh, our, uh, this, our action, and then it will become the culture of QMM. You can say like, you know, like uh, we are multi-racials, you know, like we welcome Malaysian, uh, like uh, Indian friends or Malay friends, you know, all to come together and then we share together and then we, we, we can work together and then we, we also live happily in GMM here. You can see like, you know, we don't have any like so far uh, 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 this uh, policy or something like that in our association. So, um, and uh, I can say like the leader, the leader have to deliver what they promise. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the president, Foundation and myself, actually we have a planning, you know, to come up with a big team for the next 20 years. Wow. You know? uh, what, why, why next oh, yes. 20 years? We have got a blue team, lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we want more ladies to join. We want more profession to join. Okay. And then we want the next 20 years and then we won't stop because, you know, like uh, there's no leader or there's no candidate for our president in the future. Mm. We want to train everyone have the possibility to become the president of QMN. Nice. Uh, so then we just... Like, succession planning. Yeah. yeah I, 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 success planning. And, and this, this is also like, we can do it for our business, but we do it for association. It's very meaningful. Mm. It's meaningful for, you know, for us like inspire, hey, you are a young guy. You know, like our QMN and that's Roxon, 21 years old me. You can imagine after 10 years or 20 years that we train him, we give chance to him. Who... You know who are uh, uh, who he can achieve. You know uh, he can become maybe very high profile person or uh, one of the successful leader mm. in the industry. That you know maybe president and myself already retired. We can see the young people still can continue the journey to yeah. develop the PMM. Interesting. Uh, so this is what Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I've got two questions uh, here. One is you spoke about Roxon, uh, who is twenty one years old. My question is this, Nelson. Well, uh, what is he gonna learn because he's so young? Uh, he probably don't know anything about business. And then you have got all these people in your organization who are almighty, you know, big shots, you said. Uh, one, will he not feel intimidated uh, uh, because you have got all the big guns there? And two, uh, how much can he learn? Yeah, okay. One thing, like, I see a, a good example of a president. Every time that we have online, right? Online, then we do it like member gathering. Like we call, you know, like it's, a, it's not so official, it's like casual one, just like QMM, Mark Mark. You go to Mark Mark and then you have a drink, you just talk and then you share. Okay, uh, each of you and then you introduce yourself. And then president and myself and then as a leader, we have to take care, you know, him because, you know, he's a, he is the youngest uh, members. Then we just special introduce to him, uh, for him and then to introduce to each other. Mm. And then I think, uh, and then uh, uh, all of us and then we can easily can accept him. You know, then yeah. everyone, everyone give him the chance and then when he introduce himself, oh, think he's the youngest one, you know, come, you know, <laughs> or this and like that. Yeah. He give a lot of opportunity that he feel like uh, brothers or big brothers or big boss or something like that, willing to talk to him, mm. like, very friendly, just like no barrier, just like not like uh, you are very young, you know, I'm uh, a bit elderly or I'm a gym man or something like that. There's, you know, we are just like a family. Nice, um, nice. So, so we always give chance. And also I heard that, you know, through this, you know, like formation of communication, we start to have a, a, a business, you know, with mm. the PMM Pahang members. Okay, just, okay. I think it just happens just recently. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And and for your info, uh, uh, everyone, and also Nasrin, uh, the president, right? The national president, uh, Tan Le Siong, he is definitely a young man, yeah? 
uh, uh, he plays uh, futsal and and he is everywhere every time so if you speak about nasrin that uh, you don't sleep that's the man his schedule is always full yeah so on that on that same note right arlene i've got this question that okay. was that was asked uh, as to uh, you said 20% women 80% men uh-huh. do you as a oh, woman sorry, yeah exactly i mean pretty much about that number yeah but you as a woman do you feel intimidated do you feel like you know what i'm among men and um i cannot speak out uh, and, and if maybe they will feel or see you differently do you feel uh, that manner uh, how do you feel and if you don't why you don't feel that way um, i actually don't feel it that way i think more of opportunities okay and then uh, more care and concern are being given especially uh, when you are a woman entrepreneur um i think i i get to where i am okay because of uh, the gender i will believe mm-hmm. okay and uh, probably because i'm a, a meticulous person as well i i'm a keen to learn person so um i think anyone who is willing to grow their business and who are uh, willing to learn should actually join PUMM nice because this is actually a great platform for you to grow and learn at the same time Okay so Alin uh, and Nelson uh, I'm asking this question to both of you because both of you all were constantly saying that join PUMM because you will be uh, getting all the benefits my question is this right. uh, why one should join PUMM an open question why one should join okay. PUMM what's the benefit what's in it for them yeah um uh, I'll go first, okay. As go ahead. Well, uh, Nelson said just now, okay. PMM actually provide a platform for networking, for open networking, okay. There is no specific uh industry that we are actually limiting on for members to join us, okay. It is actually a very diversified association, okay. So we have got members who are uh actually excelling in our uh, online to offline business and offline to online business mm. okay this especially so during this uh, mco period then we have got a uh, service provider okay to manufacturers and then we have got owners of kopi towns <laughs> two owners of large conglomerate they are all in um one platform you see and uh, for those uh, startups you are also welcome to join because um you would have a mentor we have a mentoring uh, program okay we have a boss academy and you have got multiple uh sharings that you'll be able to seek help from those big shots okay sharings of ideas so i uh, actually believe that uh, no other platform would actually offer such a diversity like uh few elements nice nelson okay the pmn we have a vision to develop an ecosystem that inspire and grow malaysian entrepreneurs okay and you know like i i can give some of the uh, some of the example what what are the ecosystem for our business? Maybe in a, during era of digitalization, we need marketing, uh, this, uh, marketing uh, uh, digital marketer. Like for example, Roxon, you know, he, start, he just started up or he started the career. And then that, you know, for our traditional businesses, we want to do transformation. We have to look for the young people and can cooperate together. Mm-hmm. And then for him, he's very young. And then he, you know, he just 21 years old when he come out and then uh, you can see uncle auntie you know you know you know, that, you know, I, I, uh, I, you know I, i'm the dad uh, yeah, something like that you know <laughs> brother sister like that and then he start to want to present and then maybe can feel like you know this thing like that you know you know because you know he you know he always actively uh, participate or maybe in our program so people have confidence and he's our member member is no young member or old member or whatever so the young member that you know we are looking for the resources and then they can go for free Okay, this is a digital marketer, and then if we want to the IT, and then we can look for Dr. Jason. You know, you want to look for TikTok. You know how to do TikTok, and then you can get a lot of people to watch, and then you become a very famous. You can look for Dr. Mike, uh, Dr. Michael Lee. Michael Lee. Ah, then he just you know uh, his announcement, and then he just declared that he got three hundred thousand of fans. <laughs> uh, how you can make it? Uh, so this is all resources within our PMM mm. family. So this is a resource that we are sharing. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like you know we cannot share. This is also uh, sharing one of the success. In fact, you know, that can help each other. Uh, and then also, I want to uh, I want to highlight one of the uh, female entrepreneurs. She lives in one uh, in Pahang called Liang. Okay, mm-hmm. I had yeah. We never been there. And then he, uh, she, her business is like very small in a small town only. 
how she can, can extend to the uh, to the throughout the Malaysia and also maybe you know like uh, to to us and then through PMN platform and then she uh, she actively participate and then also every time then I can see her and then she have very uh, very good uh, attitude and then all, uh, always participate for all the uh, all the program and also through introduction she do a lot of introduction so that people know her business and know her know herself mm. and then surprisingly one of the invitation from PMN uh, uh, that the time I I one of the person in charge and I invited her to do sharing through our FB life mm -hmm. and then she told us during the NCO and then uh, along the way she learned from PMN uh, she started the first FB life for herself wow. and then during my interview she did more than 100 FB life just within wow. one year oh you imagine one small little girl yeah. live in a small town through this platform she learned a lot and then if of, uh, every of uh, every one of us and we encourage her inspire her and then she just grow very fast and then she never scared about what crisis about you know about covid 19 or whatever mm. you know she's so brave and then i always say i look at her and then i will say to her i'm so proud of her and then also i'm so proud of pmn that the platform can help her to be a successful female entrepreneur lovely like, uh, uh alim so this is the way very nice very nice very nice the nicely said uh, and i've got some messages gi wilson Ng is saying good experience sharing and uh, kenny Ng is saying did not know you have written a, a book nelson inspiration for me to finish what i started 20 years ago there you go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. very nicely said yeah now uh uh uh, one, two, three That's months. 20 years ago. I, I didn't know about that. Huh? 20 years ago. There you go. Can you be that? Uh? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So my question, uh, twin, uh, two or three months down the road, uh, what are the plans that you have in PUMM? Uh, if you want to share. Uh, yes. Uh, we're going to have another next central committee meeting in Penang. Okay. And then we also, we, uh, throughout that, we are, uh, we also will do the, our PUMM Penang secretary opening during the time okay on the on the uh on the 17th of december 18th of december okay so we also invited our guest of honor he's the chief minister of penang ah nice yeah. you know you know uh, so this is the recognition you know for our pmn and as uh pmn penang and also our pmn so uh, this is one of the uh, one of the biggest event that you know we invited all the members to go there to have a fun and then to have a meeting and then we also have a corporate visit nice. and then we can see each other. I believe you know a lot a lot of members they never see each other before. Yeah. Because during MCO we only do online. I see you you see me and in the Zoom meeting only. But this is the this is the time. And then we can we can uh, we can uh, meet together. Nice, nice. Now I have got a potential uh, member who is asking this question. Dato Dr Lau Bintik is asking how much to join. Uh, three thousand for the lifetime membership ah. and one hundred, one hundred just for the registration. Okay, so one hundred for registration, three thousand for lifetime membership. I mean, three thousand for lifetime membership. Uh, you must be kidding. But then, uh, yeah, uh, it uh, with the with the amount that you pay, you get so much, uh, and you are able to meet so many people. You are able to grow your business. Uh, the platform to be, I must say, uh, no gender, no creed, uh, religion, race is concerned. Uh, what are you waiting for? So PUMM. Yeah, right yeah. So if you want to know more about uh, this organization, www.pumm.my. Is that right? Yes. Yes. yes please. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So please log in and then uh, have a look at how you can contribute and how you can become a member. Ladies and gentlemen, PUMM. Is something that you want to uh, look for, yeah? Now, I have got this and, uh, first. Warren. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, can I uh, share more about the uh, upcoming plans? Because please, just please, now please. you actually asked for uh, about three months, three months plan. Yes, so go apart ahead. From our, um, yeah, apart from this uh, Penang, very beautiful event, okay? So uh, after the Penang, uh, mostly, most mostly people uh, from the other states will be returning to their... Um, yeah, home homeland. Okay, and coming up on the nineteenth of uh, December, 
2021, okay, what we have got, our waiting for us, is actually the uh, beauty and uh, the ball and the beauty project 4.0. This is a CSR project, okay, okay brought to you by uh, PUMM, okay, in line with uh, My Starfish Foundation. This is for the benefits of uh, Cancer Research uh, Center, as well as Sarawak Children's Cancer Society, okay. So uh, what we do is that we help uh, these two organizations to raise funds, okay, for their uh, res uh, research uh, funds, as well as um, to fund the children who are suffering from cancer, mm. okay? okay? In Sarawak, they have got a midway home. You know, Sarawak is like so big, right? The land is so huge. that So, so people from the um, rural, rural area, when they need to stick for treatment, and they do not have the fund to actually check into hotel, okay, not to say any five-star hotel, even three-star hotel, they do not have enough of money to do so. So who can they rely on? You go to this um, Sarawak Children's Cancer Society, they have got a neat way home that mm -hmm. can help you, that you can check in, okay, for a period of time. I see. And they will actually yeah, provide you with food and lodging and a lot more. So I actually welcome all the donors, the fundraisers and interested shavies Okay, to get in touch with me for further information. So stay tuned. Nelson and myself will be going for on the 19th of December 2021 at 4 p.m. All right, 4 p.m. at our PUMM HQ, which is at Aurora Place, Bukit Jalil. Yeah. Okay, you will be seeing us live as well. We have got our professional shooting team coming with us. Okay, stay tuned with that. And together with us, uh, we'll be promoting and seeing the success of these projects. Uh, our national president, Mr. Tan Lei Xiao, and our honorary treasurer, Dr. Jason Fu, and many kind-hearted, charming souls of PUMM. Mm, amazing, yeah. I okay. mean, yeah. It, it, it's, uh, thanks for that sharing, Alain. Uh, uh, it's interesting how, when you speak about it, of course, it is a little bit of uh, fun and humor. But uh, at the back of, of this whole uh, gesture, right, it's, it's amazing how you guys are actually touching the many hearts. You know, shaving ball is no joke. It is no joke. You know, you're talking about Arlene. Uh, look at her hair. Uh, uh, Nelson Bay, look at his hair. Oh, you want to see the I know, right? So so it's not easy, but there is a cost to it. And I'm, I'm feeling uh, the emotions as you are talking about it, both Arlene and Nelson, because there are so many people out there who has got cancer and who do not have the fun that is necessary who are struggling in many, many ways. Many, many ways that you and I can never think of. But look at uh, what we can do uh, rather than blaming uh, as to what someone is not doing. So what you can do is this. Like how uh, Arlene uh, and Nelson uh, were talking about just now, that simple gesture as to go bald and start uh, raising fund for those in need uh, is something that we want to have more to come because this is how we do things now in this earth. Uh, uh, COVID came and taught us a lot of good things. One of those is you get up, you move, then you will be successful. No more waiting. Yeah, There is no more waiting time. It's either you do it or you don't want to. So the question is whether you want to do it or you don't want to. Yeah, Remember, I am more than I think. That is very important. Now, Arlene and Nelson, I have got this question I want to ask you. Nelson first, I see uh, your backdrop. Uh, is that uh, Dato uh, Lee Chong Wei or Nelson Bay? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so so this is the thing. This is the thing. Uh, Nelson, uh, you are into working and then you have got PUMM and then God knows what else you are into, yeah? But at the same time, yeah, you are active. You are into body shaping. You are into badminton. You are into uh, drum. He's a good drummer, uh, Nazreen, by the way. And, and so many things he has got. Time for the daughter. Uh, tell us, how do you do it, brother? Yeah, I think one what I can express myself is about passion. Okay, what, what I want to say that, you know, like I, I shared with you earlier because, you know, my own book, you know, is empty. You know, I don't want to feel I, you know, I regret on something that, you know, I already owe and then I, I, I cannot do this and cannot do that. So every 10 years and then I would think about my career, mm. uh, about myself. 
and then my last uh, something like that. During like uh, uh, during my I think 39 or 40 years old, so I was thinking I reached 40 years old. What I what things that or anything that I haven't achieved. So it come up in my mind is badminton, mm. is the drumming, okay, is the like cooking. You know, I want to be. You know, I like cooking. You know, all this. You know, all this interest. I bet I cannot do it during my young time because my family was poor, and then I, you know, my my parents cannot send me to the music school to to learn the music. You know, piano. You know, all these things. Uh, then my family also cannot send me to the dancing class. You know. I need to do it, and then also there's no reputation push to push me because it's very costly. And then that I miss my my dream during my childhood time, or maybe during my young time. During my young time, or well, I I really you know I like become a superstitious man. I want to I want to develop my myself, and then I want to be a successful entrepreneur. That I almost forgot all all my dream. So during forties, my daughter really getting uh, uh, uh getting big. And then family and career, everything getting stable. So then I ask myself, what I need to do it? I don't care. It's badminton, dancing, drumming, all come together. Then I have to plan. I cannot do at one time do everything. Okay, first thing I do badminton first. So during badminton time, and then uh, forty years old, I found my first badminton coach. You know, in my life, why? Because you know, like what I learned. Because you know, when we want to master something. Faster or want to master our skill, better we have a coach. Like you know, like you want to be a, okay. you want to write a book and then you have a coach. You know how to write. You know or or what or teach or something like that. So I hire the first coach and teach me just like children. Drop the shutter cord. I run here, run there. You know <laughs> how to hold the badminton, how to jump or this thing like that. So I I'm uh, this year forty seven years uh forty seven years old. So during seven years and then I change a few of the coaches. But I learned a lot, and then you can see I'm so confident, you know, like you know, I have a a a shooting like this, and then I also want to represent Malaysia. Okay, then I can go like if this everything okay, maybe next year I go Taiwan. I went to Taiwan before. I went uh, I went to uh 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 Sarawak. I went to Penang, Asia Pacific sport there, something like that. Ah, uh, so then I go for badminton tournament. Then mm. I I enjoy something like. Yeah, then I, then I feel inspired, so I need to spend my time, and then I do my training two to three, uh, two to three times a week for for my back, uh, for for the one. So after I stabilize, and then I start to find, hey, it's my time for do drumming. I have zero music knowledge. I have nothing. I don't. I don't even know how to take the two drumstick. You know how to hold, how to hit. You know, but I like to go like you know some a uh, live band. I see not only listen to the uh the the song. I only see the drama. Wow, are you play 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 like this? You know, I say one day I want. But when I grow out, I want to be like him. You know, successful drama or something like that. But I already forty plus. You mm -hmm. know, I but I I tell myself I still young. You know, when I grow out, you know, I want to be a successful drama. So I go and sign up the course, and then I even spend one week. I have a two classes. Then I can learn faster. Like this. Uh, now then I can start like I I I ready to create one. Uh, so yeah, yeah. this is you know this is what happened in a short time. Then I can do the third one. I want to share about the body shaping because you know all the time. Then I I uh all my friends also know that I'm a vegetarian. So because I try to control my diet, I do want myself to become better. You know, or fat man, or you know, middle uh, old man, <laughs> something like that. I want myself and then like good looking and then also uh, and, and also in good body shape. Okay, then then the time then uh during our MCO time, I have nothing to do, then I need to work at home. So I quickly I go to Facebook, I, I go online to check. Hey, I think this is a core sex pack challenge. Okay, <laughs> this is online, no need to go to gym and no need to, it's an online one. Then I try then I get the phone number, I call, how much is it? Oh, only cost fifty ringgit. It's a fifty ringgit only. Then I say, is there anything? Oh, you need to buy some product about the two hundred plus. I say it's worth it. And then I started from there. And then I listen to the coach. You know the coach also always young, very young to me. My my drama uh my uh my 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 drum uh teacher, I think he is about twenty five twenty six years old. And then my pregnant coach now also twenty five years old. So this one uh for. 
uh, uh, this one also the coach also about about 30 plus or something like that always younger than me but I, I, I learned from them so 100 percent whatever advice uh, ask me to what uh, the diet and then uh, uh, how to eat where uh, what time to eat and how to do uh, how to exercise and I just do it so just with three months that you can see my body okay? uh, and then, uh, body shape and then you, you say back and then I feel so confident. It's just like Nelson play a life. It's another life coming 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 in. And then I feel I, I feel like my spirit and then everything just up, you know, like maximum like this. I do drumming, wow, I so confident, you know. I do badminton, I so enjoy the game, you know, I do this, you know. So after that I come back to my career, I come back to every day that I feel so happy. Uh, so this is what uh, uh, this is what uh, I, I, I do it for myself and then I I will put everything in to my own book uh, later on or something like that. So nice. this is my sharing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Very nicely said. Yeah, see, age is uh, just a number and you have proved it right, yeah, Nelson. Very nice, yeah. How you, as you were talking about it, right, every single activity that you, you venture into, right, you were having so much of uh, smile and, and happiness in you. That's like amazing how you can actually do it and you're doing it because you want to do it, not because somebody asked you to do it. That's the beauty, Nelson. Now, Arlene, uh, same thing here. You have got PUMM, you are a, a, a legal person, and then you have got some other organizations also, I was told. Besides that, then you have got time for golfing and you have got time for everything else. Arlene, how do you do it? Uh, uh, actually, uh, I've just begun uh, beginning to learn golfing. Okay. okay. Um, however, I also spend my leisure time baking, as I said earlier. Okay. Uh, which is why uh, you, you could see some posts earlier. <laughs> uh, I'll bake more than 20 cakes in a month. That's a little crazy, okay, for a beginner. And I also uh, enjoy cycling and doing yoga. So, yeah, one thing I learned from PUMM and um, all those um, committees and, and big shots is time management. Okay, so uh, I remember our immediate past president, Dr. Tony Lui, he uh, once uh, said to uh, many people because uh, we went for an overseas trip, he said, losing around is actually for dead people. Okay, we have got no time to be a lazy person, he said. Uh. Okay? So, uh, yeah, I, I had it uh, easy uh, these two years being in a state of uh, lockdown, MCO. Okay, but um, last month uh, in Malacca, I heard our immediate past president, he said that he has actually attended 260 events, okay, just in one year. So, so how, how, how that actually amazed me, you see, and, and he has got a multi-million business uh, to manage. Another, uh, another person that I actually look up to is our national president, Mr. Tan Le Xiong. Um, through his course, the uh, time management talent course, which I attended, okay, he actually showed me the importance of managing business and how to juggle uh, around to have a work life balance. Okay, he actually had um, um, his um, multi billions, yeah, it's, it's, it's not multi millions, it's actually multi billions dollar uh, business, okay, but he is someone who can actually manage it well with a healthy lifestyle. So I, I start to learn from these people, okay? So apart from learning from uh, them, I start to make use of my uh, Google Calendar, okay, with different color coding for different appointments, okay? So I've got a coding for office-related matters, for associated matter, for my personal matter. So what I can see is uh, my, my office email and personal emails account, they are being synced properly so that everyone in the office, they can, uh, have uh, easy access to my diary. They will know my schedule, where, where I would be. And if they want to fix an appointment, they can accordingly do so. Okay? Nice. So I think time management is actually a very important point for everyone to learn. Yeah, that's nice. And, and if, yeah, yeah. And if our national president has got another chance of um, conducting this workshop again, it's called Time Management Talent Course. If you have the opportunity, please grab it, okay? Yeah. It, it's really an eye-opener for you guys. Nice, nice, nice. So, uh, if the national president of UMM is listening, uh, do that program again. Uh, let's go online and share with us so that we all can learn something and make our life much better. And I like, Arlene, the background that you have. Be grateful for everything, yes? 
Indeed, be grateful with whatever that you have. It is very important. And we have got Dato, Dr. Lau Bin Teg, uh, saying this. He says, uh, kudos to all for very inspiring sharing. Yes, indeed, uh, all your sharings, Nelson, Arlene and Nasrin, beautiful sharing. Uh, uh, I'm overwhelmed with whatever that you all have shared. Why? Because uh, it's not easy, uh, whatever that you all went through. Uh, you all are where you all are now is because of the very lengthy journey that you all went through. Uh, I spoke about how and, and the opportunity which we have been given. Exactly. And, and we should be grateful for that. And seizing the opportunity, yeah, that's very important. Yeah. Uh, having opportunity is one, seizing the opportunity. When it comes, embrace it. Like how Nasreen uh, spoke about, she was in Turkey. She went through another part of life where she was actually picking eggs in a chicken coop. So her life was so different. And look at her now, all bliss. I'm sure Arlene have got a story to tell. Nelson have got a story to tell. And everyone have a story to tell. The beauty is this. How much do you want to utilize the life that you have on this earth? You answer yourself. Susan is answering by saying beautiful people with beautiful sharing. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely beautiful bunch of people with beautiful sharing. Thank you so much once again, Nasreen. Uh, for coming by, uh, taking off your time in sharing your uh, your enlightenment, yeah, uh, your your enlightenment towards everything on writing book was amazing. Arlene, thank you so much for your for your busy time. Yeah, I don't know what color code you put in your in your diary, but th I think it's red. Yeah, but but thank you so much, Arlene. It makes a lot of uh, it, it means a lot when you are here sharing with us because of your tight schedule. And Nelson, my God, brother, you are always like that, uh, wanting to help, wanting to share. Any point of time you call Nelson, Nelson is always into sharing and trying to help you uh, one way or another. Never once I have heard him saying no. So, uh, good bunch of people. I am blessed to have all of you all in my life. Thank you so much. Uh, just uh, be there. Do not leave this space just yet. Uh, I want to uh, tell uh, or inform the rest of uh, the viewers, if you're watching this, please share this link to the many friends of yours. We have got a recorded version. We also have got the QR co uh, code uh, shared uh, online. Please scan that, watch this, pass it over. Why? Because everyone needs to be touched one way or another. Your, that one gesture of sharing that link will make a difference. I am more than I think, remember. So with that, remember, guys, we had Darwin, uh, Wahida, and also Tilak the last time around from KL Kinetic who shared with us a lot of things about how do you manage your body if you have got injury, you know, uh, physiotherapy, uh, sports re rehabilitation, and all that. I want to show a, a two-minute or three-minute snip, uh, snippet of what they have done. Uh, once you watch that, then you can leave. Watch that first. With that, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You three people, do not leave first. I have got more things to talk to you all backstage. Take care and see you all. Bye-bye. I'm KL Kinetic and today I'm going to share with you a collection of video of our athletes. They are either undergoing return to sport or injury prevention program. These are not medical advice, so if you do sustain an injury, please consult with medical professional or you can come and visit us at KL Kinetic.